This is Alan Cousins at alancousins.com where you can learn to recruit like crazy. Today we're going to talk about the top five mistakes just about all new network marketers make. You know, I've been doing this about 18 years and I've seen it all. And there's probably a few more mistakes that people make, but these five are definitely the five that are keeping people broke. Understand that these assume that you are actually doing something. Because doing nothing is a mistake in itself. We're not going to bother with that because common sense tells us that's a prerequisite. In order to make a mistake, you have to be doing something. Before we get into this, make sure that you visit alancousins.com and download our free training for our $1,000 per day Facebook method. This is a no paid advertising required method that many of our new students are using to generate $1,000 commission days. It's very workable. Check it out, alancousins.com. All right, let's get into it. So here's the first thing. First big mistake just about all network marketers are going to make is they don't understand exactly what it is that they're trying to achieve. What is their objective? See, most network marketers, once they buy their kit and they get started promoting, they think that it's their job to sell the products or to sell the company or to talk about all the wonderful people who founded the company and what great experts they are and you know how the company is debt free and how the products can cure your cancer and, and all this nonsense. And the fact of the matter is that it's a complete and total waste of time. And some of you are saying, what do you mean that's a waste of time? How can that be a waste of time telling people about our products? I mean, isn't that exactly what we're supposed to be doing? Not if you want to make any money. If you're interested in like getting your friends and family, uh, you know, using the products, I guess that's one way to go about it. But the way that you're really going to make money in network marketing is by building teams. And what you want to do is you want to focus your attention on the team building, not on the, the product selling, not on the description, uh, not on uh, all the little insignificant details that anybody can just look up on a web page ever. Okay. Now, in uh, a different tutorial, which is a very kick-ass training, if I must say so myself, at alancousins.com, there's one called Advanced Networking and Recruiting Concepts for Novices. If you are a network marketer who is not, you know, this internet marketing type of person where you're just running tons of pay-per-click advertising on Facebook or some other medium, and uh, you're actually doing network marketing, which I love, which is never going to go away. This game of contacting new people, making a new friend, finding out what their needs and wants are, and seeing if the game that you're playing is something that might be workable for them. Networking. If that is the game that you are playing, then this training here is a training you absolutely want to make the time to go through. Some of you may not like me after you go through that training, but that training does in fact lay out the truth for you in terms of what it's going to take for you to make it happen. And the reason I'm pointing that out is because I don't want to have to go through all that information again in this particular audio recording. Um, in that Advanced Networking Recruiting Concepts for Newbies training, I cover exactly what it is that you're trying to do. For now, I would just point out that if you are trying to sell the features and benefits of your products, you're wasting your time. And the main reason for that is all that information is covered on the company websites. You don't need to waste time on that. And most of you, depending on the company that you're in, your company has amazing product sales videos. I mean, they've got like video after video after video, testimonial after testimonial after testimonial, life-changing win after life-changing win. And you're going to come along and try to do all that. First of all, you're going to waste a ton of time just learning all the data to be able to rehash it all. Second of all, when you do rehash it, it's going to be like one-tenth as effective as the material that's already out there to do it. What you need to get good at is you need to get good at communicating with people in a real and sincere way to find out what it is that their problem is, that their pain is, that they need to solve. And if you find out they have a problem or a pain that your offer, your product solves, 
then you direct them to the information. You can even give them a target. Here, I want you to go to this website right now, watch that video, and I'm going to call you back in 45 minutes. I mean, this is like a two-minute cycle of action. I know that most of you listening to this are spending an ungodly amount of time studying about all the products and all this insignificant nonsense. It's not going to make any bit of difference to your bottom line. So that, I would say, is, is one of the biggest problems, is that people are too focused on the wrong target. So in terms of your overall goal, right, and so far we've talked about the product, but in terms of your overall goal, what are you looking to do, really? You're looking to, yes, get people using the products, but you're also looking to build a team. Because what you want is you want those people who are using the product, who are getting wins from it, to also become distributors, do you not? Because if they're having a win with it, they'll want to share it. And, uh, you know, the thing is that most of you guys, uh, your organization's not going to be composed of people who are going to sponsor 1,200 or 1,500 people a year. Your organization, even if it gets to 100,000 people below you, is going to be composed of you know, 99,955 people who use the product. And every once in a while, if they bump into someone who talks about a specific problem that the product solves, they'll mention it and they'll have a few people that they get on auto ship. And a tiny little percentage of them are going to build a big team. Okay. So most of the protection is going to come from that very tiny percentage of people who, people like me, who are going to go out and they're going to build, you know, they're going to sponsor lots of people. They're going to get lots of people using the product, right? So you have a two-prong focus there. One is to get them using the product, and the other is to get them onto your team. And again, uh, the material to do that, this isn't something that you should be spending a lot of time describing or trying to sell them on. This is a situation where you need to be focusing on what is their pain, what is the ruin that they have, and how can this solve it? Now, when it comes to team building, usually that's things like a lack of time freedom, a lack of income, they can't pay the bills on time every month, they want to give more to their kids, they want to spend more time with their kids, they want to take more vacations, they want to own better stuff, they want to have better experience experiences, you know, they want to have a hotter chick. Uh, they want to, you know, whatever, <laughs> whatever the thing is that relates to their lifestyle. It's not really your job to go in and explain the comp plan, right? Your job is just to get them to look at what their pain is. And once they're in it, once that pain has been agitated, just tell them to visit a link. And go through the information and you'll get back to them. That's it. And you know, doing it this way, you can contact way more people. So this ties into the second thing. Okay. The second thing is failure to contact enough people. Well, when you don't know exactly what you're doing, right? either in terms of like you feel like you haven't spent enough days drilling all the product information to sell it, which you shouldn't be doing anyway. And you haven't spent enough days drilling the compensation plan to, to show the plan, which you shouldn't be doing anyway. You withhold yourself because you feel like you don't know what to say and you don't want to look stupid, so you don't engage. And then what happens is when you do reach out and you try to communicate with people, after every communication cycle, you kind of feel like, Boy, they didn't go the way I would have liked it to go. I wasn't sure what to say. The person didn't seem to get it. The person interrupted my communication. And you have all these communication breaks. And after a couple of those, you begin to feel like you just don't want to do it anymore because it makes you uncomfortable. The fact of the matter is you're just unhatted and don't know what to do. So the hatting on it is just what I talked about earlier. If you did nothing else... Just get them in their ruin. Get them into the pain. Get them to tell you about it. So if you're just talking to them in the course of whatever you're doing, maybe it's a coworker, right? And the coworker is complaining about money. I mean, there's very simple questions you can ask these people to get them to look at what the pain of it is. 
I mean, if someone's complaining about their job, for example, and I say to them, yeah, it does sound bad. Hey, what, what if you just have to stay at that same job for the next 30 years? They'll usually say something like, oh my God, I would shoot myself in the head after the first five. Okay, there's not much to be done there. The person is already in that ruin. If you can see they're actually in their ruin, then you can ask them about, you know, do they, you know, are they willing to keep their options open for other things? Well, what kind of plan do you have to actually get out of that? Are you willing to keep your options open? None of this has anything to do with yammering on about the product of the comp plan or anything like that. That's all later, right? So 90%, 95% of everything that you do is just going to be contacting people, getting in communication with them, developing rapport in a sincere way with real live communication. I mean, really getting in and talking with people, not just like trying to trick them, not just throwing a pitch at them, hoping that they'll bite on it. You could do it that way, but you have to contact 300 people before anybody bites on it. Just communicate with people in a real way. Hey, how's it going? No, I mean, really. How's it really going? Well, yeah, that's good. What's, uh, how's your family doing? I mean, just chill out. Take the time. Relax. Okay? Stop worrying about pitching your product. Stop worrying about pitching your opportunity. Just engage with the person. If you cannot achieve that, you're not going to achieve anything else. Believe me. Okay. So the first time you talk to them, you might not even mention anything about the business or anything like that. You may just talk to them and see how they're doing and make some mental notes about, you know, what are their pain points in their life. Maybe you do get to the point where you, where they say they're open to looking at options and you introduce them to something. But that's not really the point. What I'm trying to get you to do here is I'm trying to get you to see that this is just a question of you contacting people and getting in communication. And you contact and you get into communication. You contact and you get into communication. And some of these people you cannot get into contact, uh, communication with. You contact them and they're just not willing to communicate. I had a woman last week who joined me in one of my businesses. So as a courtesy, which I normally don't do, but as a courtesy... I was sitting there at the computer. I didn't have anything going on. I saw the notification come in, so I pick up the phone and I dial her number and I say, Hey, it's Alan Cousins. I hope you don't mind me calling you, but I just wanted to... And I was about to say, I just wanted to let you know that I sent you an email with instructions that if you follow those, it'll save you about 90% of the time in getting set up. I just wanted to make you aware that there's instructions there waiting for you. But I never got it out. Because she started, she interrupted my communication and then uh, hung up the phone. She didn't hang up the phone because she didn't know who I was or because she was being rude. She's just so out of communication that it was almost impossible to get into communication with her. And I could have called her back if I really was intending to get in communication with her and we could have worked on it. The point I'm trying to make here is that a lot of the people that you go out, when you, when you try to pitch something to people and it just seems like, man, they just don't get it. Man, they just don't want to hear about it. They just don't want to talk. You're right. They're not in communication. You have to get in communication with them first and you have to have some rapport developed. And so if there's one skill that's the most important skill, I would say it would be that, getting in communication with people and developing a rapport with them. And everything else can be pushed off to the side until you master that. Now, that shouldn't take you more than a few days. It shouldn't take you more than just a few people. Just sit down and look at, like, all, what are the things you can communicate with people about? And then just work on drilling. How do you get them to tell you about that? But here's the thing. It has to be a sincere live communication. It can't just be you reading a script like a robot. It doesn't work. People are going to be aware of what you're doing. And that's one of the reasons why people hate, quote, salespeople, unquote. It's because salespeople get stuck in using these scripts and they talk to you like you're an idiot. And what they say doesn't fit the situation. 
And you can see real obviously that they're just trying to use logic to trap you into saying something that you don't really want to do. And the fact of the matter is that they're not in communication with you. So like I'm communicating with you right now. I'm not reading a script. I'm just talking to you sincerely and honestly about these concepts. Okay? But you'll do better just asking them questions and letting them tell you. Be interested in them. It's not like, well, I have to get them to talk to me to make a sale so I can make money. Wrong. That won't work either. Because communication consists of intention and attention. And then the idea is that you're communicating. So if your intention is not to know them, not to care about them, not to help them, but your intention is only for you to make a sale so you can get a commission, they're going to feel that. And you're never going to get a rapport developed. It's not a trick. This is one of the things I see new people like they, they start and they try to, they're trying to learn these scripts and stuff, but they feel like they're just trying to trick people. How do I trick someone into like buying something? Like this is all some big trick. It's not a trick. <laughs> You're just networking. You're just getting to know people. Rapport comes when you communicate and they get a chance to know you and you get a chance to know them. The rapport develops. And with, with that being absent, everything else is a waste of time. Okay. So, the reason why I tell people, look, don't waste time trying to, to sell your products and pushing the company information and things like that because um, your time is better spent develop, engaging with them, developing a rapport, right? So the first thing was you're too worried about trying to sell the products and pitching the company. Let's just cancel that. Let the websites do that, Okay. Second thing is not engaging in real, live, sincere communication with these people because you're not quite sure what to say or do. And that will prevent you from reaching out and contacting enough people. So that's three of the five things. Right? Failure to contact enough people, not engaging them with real, live, sincere communication. And then when you do communicate with them, you spend all the time like a sales bot just pitching your products and, and your company violate any of those and your business is not going to grow believe me i did it the first year in network marketing in 97 i did that for a year didn't sell a single thing did not enroll a single person everything i was doing was logical everything made sense but it just kind of seemed like nobody wanted to talk about it it just kind of seemed like i was bothering people Right? So all of you who are listening to this who think, well, I just don't want to bug my friends and family. There shouldn't ever be any situation in any of this where you're actually bugging your friends and family. It just blows my mind when people tell me that. Like, what are you doing to bug them? Why don't you stop doing that? Because when I talk to an uncle or a cousin or my mom or a friend and I ask them about their life and how things are going and what their plans are and what they've been doing... There's no reason why that should bug anyone. It doesn't make any sense. So if you feel like you're bugging people, you're doing something wrong. Okay. Now, in terms of how do you get from the communication, the engagement, the rapport developing into pitching the offer, well, that's a different, that's a different lesson. And again, I would suggest you uh, visit this Advanced Networking and Recruiting Concepts for Novices page. For that okay so the fourth thing I would say is there's an issue with new people rushing to make the offer and I kind of covered that a little bit and these things tie together the best example I can give you this is on Facebook now there's a there's a thing and again if you go to alancousins.com there's a black banner it says thousand dollar per day commission you click that and you can download the training on it but there's this thing that people do where they go out on Facebook and they just kind of, they send you a friend request and then they just kind of throw up on you in the message thing about how great their opportunity is and they give you a link. It's just pitch, 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 pitch. Or they just put, hey, how's things? And you go, pretty good. And they go, 
here's this great thing and we made this much money and here's the link. And it just doesn't fit. It's like uh, walking into a party and just walking up to the first person you see and handing them your business card and going, call me. Can you call me tomorrow and we can do business tomorrow? Call me. It, it just doesn't fit. And if you look at things in, in those terms, like you're, you're at church and you're standing around before the sermon, right? How people socialize before they go into the chapel there. Uh, or you're at a party. Right? Someone invited you to a party and, and you don't really know many people there, but you go there. You wouldn't do that. But that's what people do online. That's what they do with their, their friends and such. That's a mistake. I've never known anybody who actually did that, whoever made any money, yet people continue to do that. Right? So don't rush to get to the offer. If you think of it in terms of steps, I would say maybe step one is just find a person to contact. Step two would be to contact the person, which is literally just, hey, how's it going? That's it. That's contact. It's done. I mean, you can have better, better contact content if you can look at their Facebook profile and see kind of what they're about, but you get the idea. And then it's just a question of communicating with them and developing the relationship. Again, just engage. Don't worry about pitching the offer just yet. You only pitch the offer... Once they've been qualified, okay? So contact, communicate, and the communication develops rapport. Keep in mind that communication could be two minutes or it could be two weeks. Don't worry about it. Because if you never get rapport developed, they're never going to do anything with you anyway. Okay? Okay? So contact, communicate, which develops rapport, qualify, then is when the offer comes. How do you qualify them? Well, there's lots of ways you could qualify them. But they all happen after the communication has been established, after the person has uh, communicated about what their ruin is, what their pain is that they would like to solve. Maybe you never get them to that point. Let's say out of every 10 people you contact, only three of them you ever get to the point where they're willing to discuss what their pain points are with you. Okay, then that's what it is. It doesn't mean you're failing. You just need to contact more people. Once those pain points have been established by them telling you, right? And this has to be, uh, I hesitate to use the word smooth because that implies that there's some sort of pre-rehearsed script that you're supposed to be using, and there's not. Just communicate with them. Forget about everything else. And then when you go, hey, we're in a pretty good rapport. We're joking or whatever. Then you can ask them about their pain points. Or you can direct them with your questioning along these pain points to see what their opinions are of it. And there's a great phrase I learned from Big Al Schreider, which is, I'm just curious. I'm just curious. You mentioned your job. Is that do you enjoy that work? Do you? Oh, okay, that's interesting. Well, uh, I'm just curious. Is that something that you plan on doing for the next, I don't know, 20, 30 years, or is that a temporary thing? So somehow the I'm just curious kind of takes the edge off it. You see, at some point, you're observing. You have rapport. They've. They've uh, communicated about some of their pain points, right? Now you can qualify them. That could be something as simple as, well, do you keep your options open at all for doing things outside of that to make money? That's just one question. You could say, oh, I'm just curious if you keep your options open for things other than that to generate income. You see? Now, at that point, they either do or they don't, right? Now, I don't want to give you a whole training on it, but if we make it real simple and we just, we just look at it like, I don't have to rush to the offer. And here's, I think, the problem a lot of you are running into is like you're coming into these things and you're broke and you're desperate to get money and you just maxed out your credit cards to buy your kit, whatever that is. And um, the pressure's on. And you're putting pressure on the other person and you're blowing it. 
this is not really a very good business model for pressure and rushing people okay uh, pressure and rushing people might work good on an infomercial where you're selling a sham wow or something like that and the person only has 30 more seconds to call to get the double discount <laughs> but it doesn't really work very well when you're trying to get people interested in changing their lifestyle and however long it takes for them for you to develop rapport and for you to get them to tell you about their pain points and for you to qualify them whether that's two minutes or two years that's how long it takes what you have to keep in mind is if you're rushing to get to your pitch you're destroying the deal okay you present your offer only after they've asked to see it so you've asked them a qualifying question do you keep your options open at all and they say yeah I wouldn't mind doing something different great now they're qualified and it's real light and now you can just say you know this may not be for you at all but you may want to look at this thing would it be all right if I were to give you a link do you see how even the 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 procedure of getting the link to them I'm just working with their agreement I'm not looking to violate their reality you see I'm looking to work with their reality and if they say no I don't want to look at the link then guess what they don't want to look at the link and if you would have just sent them the link and told them to look at it they weren't gonna look at it anyway so what the hell's the point of rushing it almost everyone rushes this process your problem is not that one prospect which takes me to the to the last point and that is putting too much importance on each individual prospect look at it like this you have one dollar to your name you have zero in the bank you have zero credit card available balance you have no food you have four quarters in your pocket and that's it those quarters are very important yes you wouldn't you you would fight you would physically fight someone who tried to take one of your quarters now let's back up out of that situation a little bit and look at it from a distance and consider that you being willing to physically fight someone over 25 cents is completely asinine but that's how what it would come down to because you have so little that it becomes very valuable this is why gold's valuable this is why diamonds are valuable this is why platinum is valuable and when you're just starting off in your network marketing business and you only had three leads to talk to oh my gosh those leads are so important every single one of them has to be closed every one of them must buy the product every one of them must join the business because that's all I got is those three they're very important so I push and I press and I pitch and I pitch and I I uh, violate my natural cycle of communication I violate their reality and they get uncomfortable and they push me away and I pull back and they push me away I mean you look like a stalker and what is a stalker other than someone who can't get a girl and he has to have that one because she left him and he can't get another one you see you're making them too important now they are important in terms of their valuable their human beings and human beings are important but I mean in terms of your business you know you do way better just contacting more people do you see how these points fit together rushing to the offer because it's so important to get this person to the offer because they're so important that they join because I don't have enough people to talk to because I'm not contacting enough people because I'm withholding myself from communicating in a sincere and honest way in a, in, in a way that will actually work to develop rapport so I don't reach out 200 times a day like I should or 100 or however many times you do it and also once I do contact them I spend all my time talking about how great the products are and how wonderful the compensation plan is 
So if you wanted to get a picture of the wrong way to do it, all you'd have to do is just look at what the average new network marketer does. <laughs> and that's the wrong way, which I think is fascinating. Don't you think that's fascinating that almost everyone when they're new, they do everything wrong? And what I think is fascinating is that uh, and after doing this for years, this gets really clear. But you have to consider, you may not be aware of this yet, but MLM companies, their whole model is not really designed for you to build your business. It's really designed to move as much product as possible. And moving as much product as possible uh, is completely disrelated to your paycheck as far as I'm concerned, because your paycheck really depends on you building large organizations of people. And so what happens is that the training that most of these companies give you in terms of what to do, which is make a list of your friends and family, then call them up and invite them to a home meeting or call them up and arrange an appointment to come over. It's all this push, 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 push. Let's get it done. Yeah, rah, rah, let's win. You're going to be awesome and make it a great day and all this stuff. But it violates the natural cycle of communication that people are used to. That's great that you're all pumped up and that's great that your company has said, okay, you're going to get your first three signups this weekend. But that doesn't change people's reality in terms of what a natural cycle of communication is. And it doesn't change the fact that they think you're a weirdo when you call them up out of the blue and you try to push something down their throat. So if you got a family member you haven't talked to in two years and you call them up out of the blue, I would say you're probably not even going to get into talking about the opportunity that day because you're going to need to develop rapport with that person. My recommendation would be don't even bother with your friends and family just because of that. Because if i got an uncle I haven't talked to in years and I call him up, it's going to take me two months of developing rapport, getting rapport back again, because it's like, why is he calling me? I haven't heard from him in years. And all of a sudden, he's just calling me out of the blue. There's got to be some curiosity there about why. Well, that's fine if you want to take the months and months to redevelop the rapport and all the time. For me personally, it's easier just to find a person I have never met before and develop rapport. Then there's not all this, this whole extra step of like re rebuilding or building the rapport with someone that I should have had it with in the first place. I hope this is making sense to you. So failure to contact enough people, not using real, live, sincere communication to really engage with people, to really find out what their pain points are, to really find out what, what it is that they need and want and to be willing to accept it if what they need and want has nothing to do with you. That's totally okay. Then you rush to the offer. And once you get there, you're worried about you're spending 45 minutes selling the products and selling the opportunity, which you shouldn't be doing. That's 45 minutes. You could talk to 10 other prospects. But you do that. Why? And you go on and on and on and on and on because each prospect is so important. Guys, just go out and contact people. Contact, 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 contact. You contact 200 people a day. Hell, if you contacted 20 people a day and you just applied these five things correctly, your business would grow. If you contacted 200, it would grow a lot faster. And what you have to consider is what you have for a prospect list right now might totally suck, but what if you're going to have six months or eight months or two years from now, if you just keep doing that, two years from now, you're going to have tens of thousands of contacts. So this, these are five things that you could just note down and look at what you're doing right now. And compare that to the things these each of these five points that I talked about. And see how you can start tweaking these things. Because one of the things that will happen for me being, I'm in a different kind of uh, phase with it. I'm more in the phase of coaching team members on how to do stuff than I am. And, and I still go, I still recruit like crazy, but they just come in. I think I've had five people, five new people join my business today. And uh, literally, the only work I've done today so far is I hooked up the microphone and I opened the recorder and I started recording this. <laughs> you see, you do reach a point where you ha you've made so many contacts, right? And you've got rapport developed with so many people that they just start coming to you. 
well, do you know that you, you can't do that on day one? So when you come to someone like me and we're like, yes, we'll show you how to do this. So they come in on autopilot. You're getting five signups a day on autopilot. You don't ever have to talk to people on the phone. We don't mean on day one. We mean after you bust your butt for 90 or 180 days. Now let's look at that. Let's think about, well, geez, it seems like a long time. I need money now. Well, you know what? Maybe this business isn't right for you. But here's a couple points on that. Here's some things you can look at just to make it feel a little bit better. If you happen to be one of those people and you're like broke and you dumped all your money into your startup kit and you just need to get money right now, right now. Um, the MLM model. I mean, I'm talking about the typical network marketing model where you've got a monthly auto ship of a physical product and you get a tiny commission on each monthly auto ship and the commission's usually like 6 to 10%, something like that. That model is not a fast income model. It's just not. I don't really like that business model for myself. I like the idea of that model because there are some amazing products out there. There really are. There are products I take. I spend probably between 300 and 500 a month on products from, I actually buy products from Longevity. I think they are the best uh, nutritional products on the planet. I honestly don't think there's anything better. I don't think there's anything that absorbs better. And there's nothing else that I've ever done that absolutely changed my body in the course of just a few months from being like literally not able to run at all to now I can go jog four and a half, five miles. I mean, they are miraculous. Am I telling you that to sell you on it? No. I don't, I think the only, I mean, I mention it to people, I don't even give them my affiliate link because the commission percentage is so tiny that it's not, it's just not that big a deal. I mean, maybe at some point if I decided I'm real, really make a thing of this and I started sponsoring five or six people a day and do it for after two or three years, it would build up into something. But I could take that same amount of people and put them into something else and make way more money. That's the way I look at it. So if you're a network marketer, it's okay. It's a cool model. It has value. It helps people. It really does. And there's certain things like, like I just mentioned, uh, there's an aspect to it where it becomes a crusade, it becomes a, a, a mission of passion as much as it does a business. Well, for me personally, I've just never really been big on like staying broke for five years to be on a, uh, a mission of passion. But if you want to, you can do that. But you're going to have to apply these things, you see. But let's look at it like this, right? Once you start your network marketing business, now, eh, you know, you have a home business. So if you use a bedroom for your office, all that space, that square footage is tax deductible, all your pens and paper and computer and all the courses you buy and all that stuff is all tax deductible every time you travel somewhere. Uh, those For that, those, those are tax deductible every time you buy a book or something related to your business, that's tax deductible. Uh, percentage of your electricity and water and trash bill and maintenance on your property and everything is all tax deductible according to the what percentage of the space you're using. So most of you, you're coming out ahead just by having the business, just by doing anything with it, even if you never sponsor anyone. Okay, So that's all good and that's all positive. And there are people who make millions and millions of dollars doing that. And that's one of the things that gets people interested in this type of thing. And that can be achieved. And I actually did in my early days in network marketing, that's what I was doing was straight up MLM, low commission percentage. And you got to put in a tremendous number of people. And I did. And uh, so I know what's going to need to happen. And I spent a year struggling <laughs> of just not doing all these five things wrong for a year. And so the other day, somebody mentioned something to me on Facebook about uh, these things and I was looking at everything that they were doing and I was going, God, it's, like, it's almost like every single thing this person is doing is something that's not going to work. And I just started looking at it and I looked at some other people like what they were doing and I'm like, you know, there's only about four or five things that once you correct them, it just goes. And, and these are those five things I believe. I'm sure some of you can come up with some other things, but most of the other things are all instructional, step-by-step -step or tutorial-based. And these are the conceptual things that everything else is based on. So I hope that helps you. 
Um, you may even want to listen to this over and over again if you're, you're the type of person that this applies to. And for each of these points, there's probably a lot of training that could be done just on the communication aspect of it. And that's the other thing I wanted to point out is um, this one here will take you a long ways. Um, this one here will take you a long ways. And this one here will take you a long ways. And then if you go to alancousins.com and you click this banner here and you put your email in, uh, you'll get to hear from some of our students and you'll get to uh, get oriented on the process and what the approach actually is that we use. And then if you decided that you wanted to become part of that group, you would have access to very exact instruction, training, mentoring, ongoing live trainings, uh, access to view live recruiting. And this is all using free social networks with no paid advertising. You'd have access to all of that stuff. So you could really hone it. You, know, you practice it, and then you go back to the live training. You see what you're doing right and what you're doing wrong. So you can master it. And the idea here is to get you to the point where you just don't have to worry about it anymore. You just know how to do it like any other job. Like if you're a waiter, you know, you know how to do that. You walk up to the table, you smile, you say hello, you say, can I start you off with some drinks, right? And then there's a certain pattern. There's a process that you use. Every table, every table is the same. It's all the same. It's the same thing over and over again. So what would happen if you just mastered those few steps and you got all five of these things hammering on all cylinders correctly the way they should be done and your contact base just grew and grew and grew and grew and grew and grew and grew, and grew. what would happen? Well, you'll see when you click that banner and put your email in there that what, happened for, what happens for a lot of our students is they start making a thousand bucks a day and they leave their job. Now I'm required to give you a disclaimer, which is that that is a hypothetical uh, or it is a testimonial. Uh, those results may not be typical. Your results, if you were to apply that information, could be better or could be worse. Okay, nothing I've said here is intended as a guarantee of results. Uh, however, uh, that is what we do. Uh, it does work for people who apply it correctly, and you should take a look at it. Now, uh, if, if this uh, tutorial, you found it helpful, uh, please leave a comment below if you're watching this on my blog or if you're watching it on YouTube. And uh, please give me a share on your own social media. Cool? All right, we'll talk next time. Bye.